Hey Connections, it's good to be with you again. Now, we're going to begin a new series, but before we get into that, let me ask you a question. What is it that keeps you awake at night? As you're laying there in bed and you want to go to sleep, you're trying to go to sleep. In fact, you took some stuff to get you to sleep. You just aren't going. You can't shut your brain off because, well, you're overwhelmed. Something is bothering you. You know, we live in a world that's filled with anxiety. People are struggling to cope. In fact, some don't. We struggle with people who have depression. Depression leads into suicidal thoughts. Some act on it. Some don't, thankfully. But where do you turn to? Where do people turn to that are feeling overwhelmed, that, that just don't know where to turn? Their, their anxiety levels are beginning to come off the chart. Well, some turn to a drug of choice, alcohol, pills, whatever it is. Um, they turn to that to kill the pain, to stop that sense of feeling. They need it to be numb. Some, well, they turn to counselors. Uh, counselors is a well-paid uh, position nowadays. And I'm not saying don't do that, but that is only a source of help. Some, they're either too embarrassed to talk about it, or they have been taught to pull up their own bootstraps, um, they hide their feelings to the point where they break. And so they allow that depression to, to cycle in. Well, we have heard for a long time, especially for those who are Christians, that the Holy Spirit will cry out for us. Haven't we all heard, oh, just turn to prayer or I'll pray for you. Let's be honest. Even Christians struggle with that. We have uh, conflicting ideas. Why is it that when we pray for healing, some people are miraculously healed, while others, the suffering that they go through, we just want to to step in and, and to take their pain away from them because it seems like all they are is in this immense pain, and, and we wonder, where is a loving God in the midst of that, and, and why did that person get healed? You know, we pray for our children, and, and why is it that some, you know, God seems to just lavish them with all kinds of gifts, while others, it's just a nightmare from day to day, and so this prayer becomes confusing to us. Why is it that what should be instinctively normal for us really causes us some internal debate? So here is a question. What is the purpose of prayer? Prayer for a Christian? Prayer for someone that is not yet a follower of Christ? What are we trying to do with God? Are we trying to get God to change um, the direction in which our life is going? Are we trying to convince God to, to change what is around us, to change God's opinion? Some, and Christ followers are just as guilty of that, as sometimes we, we want God to be like Santa Claus. We pray for something and we just want these gifts to come from God without having any more of a, a, a commitment than just saying, hey, God, I, this is what I need. So what is the purpose of prayer if it's... So what is the purpose of prayer? Well, 
the disciples had the same kind of question. They, they, they wanted to know what Jesus was doing when he went off to pray. And Jesus came back with something that's simple. So simple that I think we struggle with the answer. Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer, or what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Let me turn to you, or let me turn to the book of Matthew. It's chapter 6, starting with verse 9. And Jesus said, Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to a time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Not exactly the way that we quoted or we recited in church. But this is really the, the entry to what this prayer is all about. Years ago, I was asked this question uh, by an organist in one of our churches. And she said, you know, we say this prayer all the time, but what does it really mean? Well... I took time and, and, and I wrote a book. I encourage you to, to go onto Amazon and grab it as well. And it is a common prayer for a common person. It's the Lord's Prayer is seen through God's heavenly mansion. Over the next several weeks, we are going to take this prayer, break it down into uh, small bites which we can handle, and we're going to use the backdrop of a mansion or a home for us to begin to have a visual connection to it. But before we get there, let's, let's begin to really understand prayer. Prayer is nothing more than a conversation with a friend. We, we overcomplicate it. We try to come up with, with systems. We come up with a formula. We come up with with some basically how-to. Some Christians are really good at learning how to pray. But the question is, why to pray? So we need to let Jesus set a pace for us. And this pace is found in this prayer. See, the problem is we get sucked into the idea that if we pray the Lord's Prayer, we've done it. But we have to understand the Lord's Prayer. And when we understand it, I believe that our questions of why to pray will become answered. So let me say this. If you're new to the faith or if you are yet be seeking to become a follower, cry out. That's, that's a place to begin is, is to let your spirit cry out to God's spirit. But don't leave it there. Don't, don't just ask God for something. Prayer is a conversation. It's a two-way street. So how do we hear God? Well, we hear God through Scripture. We hear God through conversations with others. We hear God through a counselor. We hear God through music, through nature. God is constantly communicating with us. But we need to slow down. Take some deep breaths. And don't get ahead. Reminds me of a, of a little story, and, and it's a personal one. Years ago, I was in school, and I was in training to be a, a, a camp director, and we would often go out on hikes, and there was one individual, and, and his mission was to get to the end, and, and he just he, he ran through the woods, and he would get to the place of camp, and he'd set up camp. But when we would all get together and gather around the fire at night, we began to talk about the process of the trip that we took. And some talked about a waterfall. Some talked about the animal they saw or the flowers or different trees. Or, or 
you know, different things along the way that they encountered. And they turned to this young guy and they said, what did you see? I don't know. I wasn't focused on anything. I was just trying to get here. Well, that's, that's what it is with our prayer. Slow down and begin to notice the things that are around you. What is God saying to you through what is around you? So with that, let's pray. Let's get ready for next week where we're going to look at our Father, which is in heaven. So let's, let's pray. So it is, God, that we come to you today seeking to understand this, this power of prayer and what it means to have our spirit commune with your spirit. How does that work? What is the mystery that we can find in these moments? Open our eyes. Open our hearts so that we can see you so that we can get a glimpse of what this whole relationship is all about between us. Draw us closer. Draw us closer each day, we pray. We put this into your holy name. Amen. All right. See you next week. And why don't you take time, not to memorize the Lord's Prayer, but to read it. In Scripture, start with Matthew chapter 6, starting verse 9, and find the other locations. And maybe just Google, what is prayer for? We'll see you next time.